This week we're profiling some of our circuit court warrants with Scotty McGlashan, our clerk of the court. Your police department serves you every day in a different way. The police are mighty handy in these circumstances. The life savings of many persons are still intact because of expert protection by their police. Hi, I'm Sheriff Gary Hoffman. I want to welcome everybody to this week's Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted. But before we get started, I've got a very special guest, a great friend of mine, and somebody who's a great icon in the community for running our circuit court. I'd like to introduce to you the Honorable Scotty McGlash. Oh, it's just Scott. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Gary. Sir. Thank you for having me this morning. I really appreciate that. I'm glad to have you on here. You know, a lot of times when we're asked about warrants and stuff, a lot of people don't understand the difference between something that occurs in our district court and something that occurs in our circuit court. Yeah, and, and it's not surprising. It's uh, it's interesting because we get that information all the time. Uh, circuit court is the oldest court, and of course the, the sheriff is is the uh, highest elected official in the county, going back to the king's court, and, and justly so. Uh, but the thing that's kind of interesting is the circuit court, particularly in Queen Anne's County, is the is a county court. It's the people's court as compared to the district court, which is is a state court, and, and both are terribly necessary as well as our two appellate courts above that. But people get confused about that and, and, and the warrants issue the same way. Well, today we're lucky enough to profile on our Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted show, oh, Circuit that's, Court that's, Warrants. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to hopefully be returning some of these persons well, thank you. to the court, no problem. And, you know, 99% of the population is very responsible. Yes. When a warrant's issued, they turn themselves in, they contact the court and they make arrangements. But we still have that very small percentage of the population that's not not acting responsible. So we're going to profile those today on our Most Wanted show. Great. Robert Wesley Hamilton, arrested in 1997 for DWI on Ken Island by a deputy. He prayed a jury trial, which was set for January 12, 1998. He failed to appear and a bench warrant was issued. Hamilton is a white male. He's 57 years old. He's listed as 5 foot 10 inches tall and weighs about 135 pounds. He has gray hair and brown eyes and can be identified by a scar on his forehead. At the time of his arrest, he had an address on Postal Road in Chester. In August of 2007, he was arrested in Idaho for DWI. Hamilton was born in Maryland, but is believed to still be in the Boise, Idaho area. If you have any information on Robert Hamilton, please contact the Sheriff's Office or local law enforcement authorities. Shannon Lee Bordley. Bordley is an African-American male, six foot, one inches tall, and 200 pounds. Last known address is Fox Hill Drive in Cambridge. Known to be employed as a concrete worker, the circuit court warrant issued in 2013, charging him with failing to appear in a paternity case. As we've always said, it's not just the dads, but the moms that can be labeled as deadbeat dads. But in this case here, we really have a deadbeat dad. Glenn Martin Morgan. Morgan is a 49 year old white male. He has brown hair and brown eyes. He's six foot tall, weighs about 175 pounds, and has scars on his stomach and left wrist. The last known address was Potomac Avenue in Brooklyn, Maryland. He's possibly on North Charles Street in Baltimore. His license was suspended in 2006 due to his non-support. Obviously, his arrearage is quite large, based on a 52,000 preset bond. Mr. Morgan is long overdue to appear in court. If you know where Glenn Martin Morgan is, Call or send an email to the sheriff's office. Again, your anonymous tip in this case would be appreciated. One of the things I always get is, what warrants have been cleared and what did your tips lead to? Well, I can tell you that recently profiled on previous broadcasts, Kelly Boone was wanted for failing to appear on a CDS charge. She did the right thing and turned herself in. Carrie Kelly wanted after she failed to appear on traffic charges. She was stopped by a deputy and taken into custody. She was later released and failed to appear a second time. After profiling her a second time, she was located with the assistance of Dorchester County Sheriff's Office. This fugitive made national attention. Colby Gilliam made quite a splash in the news recently after he posted a comment on our Facebook page. He was wanted on a circuit court warrant for a violation of probation on a first degree assault. Working with our state's attorney, Lance Richardson, and the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force, in the capital region of Maryland and in Myrtle Beach. Gilliam was quickly taken into custody in South Carolina, where he's being detained at this time in jail, waiting on extradition. One of the things I would encourage, 
If you're a wanted person out there and you want to be picked up, please, I encourage you to take the time and do as Mr. Gilliam did and please comment or post to our Facebook page. Any tips you yourself can provide about where you're located will greatly assist in the safety here in Queen Anne's County by keeping you, the fugitive, off the street. Phyllis Lorraine Johnson, Denton Police Department recently impounded a truck and contacted our office to find out some information about the owner. Again, the warrant staff recognized the name on the warrant and the owner of the vehicle matched. This person went to claim her vehicle and thanks to the Denton Police Department, another warrant was served by this person showing up to claim their vehicle. James Lewis Helsel. Now, this guy has tried to reinvent himself. At 43 years old, he's gone from a car salesman at a defunct dealership in Chestertown to a guitar player playing in a country band. He now goes by the name Jimmy Schatz and plays in a band called the Carolina Rain. But he's still wanted for failure to appear for a bad check over $500. At one time he was living in Elkton and he has ties to the Newcastle, Delaware area. Hessel is six foot, 198 pounds, with brown hair and green eyes. He's known to be living in the Concord, North Carolina area, but extradition is limited to surrounding states. If you know where this guy is, and he's in one of these states, make a call and help us clear this warrant. If you're at one of his concerts or one of his gigs, let him know that he's wanted and he may want to contact us. It's only a matter of time before we catch up with him. I want to take this time to thank you, the Honorable Scotty McGlashan, for being here today. And the information that you've provided is so valuable to all the residents of Queen Anne's County and even those of adjoining counties. Well, Sheriff, thank you for, for inviting me and have me. And, and, and let, let me say this and to the citizens of Queen Anne's County. It, it, it's teamwork that makes this work. And, sure. and, and thank you for, for your, your efforts as Sheriff. You're doing a wonderful job and, and really support the court. And, and we really appreciate that. Um, I might mention also for the citizens of Queen Anne's County, please utilize our website. Uh, just Google the Maryland Judiciary and drill down to circuit court, and particularly in the jury duty uh, uh, aspect. But there's all kinds of information, business license, uh, marriage licenses, land records, uh, all kinds of f court forms are available. But as far as jury duty is concerned, if you're a juror, you can go in and Judge Ross and, and our staff post when the jury has to appear. So it's right on the website and, and, and it's great now because any jurors we talked before is only responsible for a 30 day period, not a six month period. Mm -hmm. So they can look in there. Believe it or not, the, the largest complaint I get from people for jury duty is they said, I was on jury last month, but all my trials were canceled. <laughs> you know, well, we appreciate that, you know, and, and I, I thank the citizens of Queen Anne's County and, and I, on behalf of Judge Ross, Thank you very much for the, for the service you provide. But Sheriff, thank you for inviting me today. Scotty, really thank you. I'll tell you, I hear so many good kudos about you, about your accessibility, well, um, working with the public. Uh, I talked to a gentleman last night who told me that he had had a work conflict, contacted you, went through the proper procedures, and you all were able to still, he was still able to do the jury duty, but you all were able to accommodate his schedule. And I'll tell you, that means a lot to the citizens the hard work you do and, and Judge Ross as well and, and the staff and that you staff have uh, I have to we have to give credit Miss Dawn Knock because she's our jury commissioner and, absolutely and she, she is very sensitive to the needs of Dawn's the a wonderful person yes she yeah. is you, yes, you she have is. a great staff over there they're always accommodating and always willing to work with the community well they, they, they we work for the people we we do we do <laughs> we so love our job we do love our job <laughs> yes sir thank you Sheriff. So it's good seeing you it's nice seeing you Thanks. if you have any information about these wanted people for unsolved cases, please contact the Queen Anne's County Sheriff's Office at 410-758-0770 or email us at sheriffinfo at qac.org. We also recommend you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. With the tips we get from the viewers, we're hoping that some of the Queen Anne's County's most wanted get to experience this.